Hey, what's going on, y'all? Welcome to Me Cranium Barbecue and Review. Today, I'm gonna be doing another cook on the Spider 22. This, this cook is going to be uh, to show people how does the Spider 22 do without a smoke tube. During my brisket cook, I used a smoke tube. Uh, some people say, well, you know, how can you really gauge it? And hey, you know what? How can you really gauge how much smoke gets on your food if you have a smoke tube in there? You know what? Okay, guilty as charged. I just went with instinct and I already know, kind of know that pellet smokers don't offer and give, it, give out as much smoke as a regular stick burner. So that's why I put that smoke tube in there. However, pellet smokers are perfect for smoking poultry and also fish. So today I'm going to spatchcock a whole chicken and I'm going to put it into the Spider 22. I'm going to smoke it. Just a couple simple steps to do here and uh, I'll be going live later during this cook so that y'all can see what's going on as well. Let, I'm gonna get the camera pointed down. I'm gonna show you the simple steps I'm gonna be doing. Okay, so I'm gonna be spatchcocking this chicken. How I spatchcock chicken is completely different than what everybody else does. I like to uh, take the thighs, I pitch them together like this, see, like this right here, and exposes that whole backbone right there. All right, so I kind of just squeeze them together like this. You can hear it pop all the way down. You hear it pop. Now, I am touching this with, with uh, I just touched the poultry, I'm gonna be touching my knife. I am going to clean my knife, okay? So I'm not too worried about it. I take one swipe with the knife right here, Go right down the go right down the back backbone. You only got where you get kind of get down here, but other than that, you don't have to worry about it. Come down here. There you go. Spatchcock. Not to worry about all this stuff right here. There you go. Step one. Push down. Break that. You don't really have to cut this right here. I mean, if you want to, you can put a little, a little slit right here. Right there. But I just push it down. There we go. Alright, it's completely flattened out. Uh, next step. Alright, so I went inside and I washed my hands. Alright, my hands are clean. And they're dry. They're sanitized and they're ready to go for this next. I'm going to say something about that real quick. Hold on. All right, talking about washing hands real quick. Okay, anytime I touch poultry, every time I get done, I'm very conscious of what I touch, sanitize everything. And this is also how you avoid the coronavirus. They're, they're checking like doorknobs and finding coronavirus on doorknobs and everything else. Wash your hands, people. That's gross. I'm gonna divert off this real, real quick and have a little rant. I can't tell you how many times I go into a, I go into a public bathroom. I go to urinal, the guy next to me, he's going, he's going to the bathroom too. I go, I start washing my hands. Now here's a tip. When you're washing your hands, the proper time to wash your hands is seeing your alphabet, A, B, C, D, and so on, okay? Say your alphabet and that's how long you should wash your hands. I can't tell you how many guys walk right by me and walk right outside. Man, that is just freaking, oh, that's so freaking gross. And I say I say something to these guys too. I'm like, dude, you serious? You're not gonna wash your hands? Bro, this is why I don't touch, this is why I like shaking hands. I'll do fist daps. Ba bow That's it, I don't touch people's hands. That's nasty. <laughs> All right, back to the chicken. Well, I have here some Himalayan sea salt. I'm gonna go ahead, I wanna salt the surface of this uh, while it's dry. I already washed, I already rinsed it off. I patted it dry. I'm just gonna put some, some Himalayan salt on there. It's gonna help dry out the chicken. It's also supposed to help tenderize it and make it more moist. Right now, I'm just worried kinda, I just wanna do, that's why I'm kinda worried about more or less the, uh, the skin. I just kinda wanna dry the skin out. Now, I just touch it with these fingertips right here. All right, so if I'm grabbing right here, okay, so my fingertips right here that I've touched the chicken is not touching this, but I'm still gonna sanitize this. All right, there, now I can fully touch my hand. Press that in. I'm gonna let this sit in the fridge. Ideally, you could probably do this for a day or two. Just let it sit in the fridge. Since I'm gonna be going live later on today, I'm gonna let this sit in the fridge for, I don't know, maybe four or five hours. And I'm gonna take it out and hopefully the skin will be, you know, somewhat dry. And I'm gonna put it onto the Spider 22 pellet smoker. Adapter for the 22 inch Weber kettle. I went to the store and I got some, uh, some herbs. I got some oregano, some sage, some tarragon, some rosemary, and also some thyme. I went ahead, I rinsed them off. 
So they got some water content on them, which I want. And then on top of the chicken, I'm gonna be doing uh, some ghee and also maybe some uh, some butter spray. And I'm topping it off with some It's Incredible, because it is incredible. And I'll be putting the chicken onto this uh, stainless steel tray right here with holes in it. It's help everything breathe and come through. Just gonna mix these up, all nice and mixed up. Here's the chicken that's been salted. Uh, it's been five hours, uh, actually five and a half hours that's been salted. This is it's incredible on there. So I got one dirty hand, one clean hand. Sit them on those herbs, now it's time to get them on the pit. All right, y'all, smokes are rolling. Uh, just so you know, I'm also monitoring the temperatures of the grill as well. I have my Inkbird. You can see if you smoke to clear. So this is my Inkbird probe right here. This is the one to the spider. So I got it right next to each other to try to see if, uh, to try to make sure that the spider is reading an accurate temperature because I know my Inkbird is. Okay, so I went ahead and I turned this on for five minutes. I shut it off for 30 seconds. And now I just turned it back to uh, 300 temperature. This is another cook where I would actually would like to use 275, but I can't because there's no 275 setting. I really like the 275 uh, temperature to cook at, but I have to choose either 250, which you can't really crisp up the skin at 250 on a chicken, or you gotta go with 300. So I gotta, I'm gonna go with 300 on this cook. All right, so this thing literally took five minutes to get up to, to 300 temperature. Something you have to get used to with the Spider 22. It's just going to shoot past your goal temp at first, but then it's going to it's going to stop. The fan's going to stop uh, moving. The temperature's going to come back down, and it's going to level out those uh, it's going to level out those temps. But right now it's at uh, it's at uh, 325, and then my ink bird is saying inside it is 363. So we got a pretty big uh, dis disparagement right there between the two. So 335 and 363. So that's about 30 degree difference, right? there but I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna get the chicken on right now get some uh, ghee on there there we go now I'm gonna get ready to go live all right I forgot to put the temp probes in all right y'all it's been an hour and a half so the chickens 140 140 so that's perfect and it uh, looks like we're only just a couple of degrees off on the, you know, like seven degrees off, 12 degrees off, because I know the ink bird is accurate. The controller of the spider is just a few degrees off. That I can actually deal with. So uh, it's actually tightened up. It was about 30 degrees difference. Now it's uh, tightened up within uh, 10 degrees. That's good to me. Hour and a half. Let's take a look at what it looks like. All right, I can really smell those herbs uh, cooking in there. It smells so good in there. Oh, look at that. You just smell this. You smell, can you smell it? At you bet you wish you could. That smells phenomenal. So we'll take some butter spray and we'll go ahead and spray it. Lay it back on. Keep it going. Something really quick. Blowback on here is normal. I said this in the live, but if you didn't catch my live, the reason why the smoke is blowing back on the pellet hopper inside the Spider 22, how they explained it to me, is because the um, is because since this is small and it's compact that it's really tight. So what it does is, is that you can actually get smoke blowback into here, which is normal. That's why they have uh, a warning label right there to operate with the hopper lid closed at all times. All right, I wanna show you something here. Um, this is also another problem I had. This thing has been so hard to, to get in line and try to get screwed on that actually I bent in one of these uh, pegs which makes it even tougher. Whenever I adjusted it today, I actually had to use a pair of channel lock uh, pliers. You can actually see the mark right there. I had to use a pair of channel lock to even turn this. It was so hard to turn, so I don't know what they plan on. And also, the four washers they have inside the instruction manual is an air. It's supposed to be only two. They said it only really needs only two washers. One on the outside is where the washer needs to be. But I just want to show you all that, that that peg is broken. It got turned to the inside because I've had such struggles trying to get this thing on. Now this side over here is a little bit more friendly. It's a little bit easier for me, but that one over there is uh, a real pain in the ass, but this here is still hard to turn as well. Okay, it's been two hours. Temperature is at 167, 165 in the breast. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it off and tent it and let it rest for about 10 minutes. All right, there, gonna let it rest. All right, it's been 10 minutes. Let's get the 
seen. Off of here, these herbs are nice and crispy up underneath. We should you smell this. This is just, I mean, divine. Oh la la. Nice little pink ring around there, so some smoke did get in there, which I like. All right, so this skin ended up crisping up. Well, at least on the legs it did. Pretty nice. That's uh, some nice, beautiful, juicy, still steaming white meat. Look out for bones. And you can taste the herbs. You can also taste uh, a hint of the of the smoke. So the smoke did get in there. You know this is on a pellet smoker. Pellet smoker's um, specialty is chicken and fish. This is where I really like using a pellet smoker. It's for these. No smoke tube needed. My favorite is the leg. Look at that. That steam coming off there. Ooh, yeah. Try meat in front of you. That's it. Two hour chicken cook. This cook is a lot different than what the uh, pork shoulder cook I did last week, which had a lot of challenges. This here had no challenges. Everything went according to plan. Everything went smooth. Everything went away. That I wanted it to go the way I had it envisioned. So anyhow, so you know, you win some, you lose some. I lost one last week. I won this week. So therefore, uh, I guess I'm uh, I'm batting 500. Like, subscribe. I'll see you next week. Ciao.